The Bible says the devil is a roaring lion. Yeah. He's going about getting to, to devour who he can. You know what? If you ever think about what a lion does, if you looked about on a dot, I seen a documentary one time that showed a pack of lions. And you know what it does? It waits to be a flock of, of uh, other animals out here, and it waits to one that's hurt, and it veers away from the flock. Uh -huh. And you know what happens? That old lion will prance upon that one that's weak. Uh, that's what I want you to see tonight. You've got to take heed to the Word of God. And when God begins to show you something, uh -huh. you've got to take heed to it. And you've got the answer for it. Because one day, you're going to stand before God, and you're going to give an account of everything that you did in this body, yes. whether it be good or whether it be evil. Amen. But I'll tell you one thing tonight. If you're not careful, we look and we say, well, the devil did this and the devil did that. Well, tell, tell the old devil what God has did for you. Right. Tell, God, tell God and tell that old devil what he's done for you. We want to tell what the devil's did on us and how the devil's fighting us, but tell him tonight where God has brought you from. Tell him what God has done for you. Has God did anything for you tonight? Has God brought you out of the life of sin? Has God did something for you that you couldn't do for yourself? That you had to listen to that voice when that still small voice spoke to you? You had to take heed. And you know what? That's what I want to read here just a little bit tonight. Go with me to the 21st chapter of the book of Luke. And I want you to listen to me tonight. I thought about this one verse. And by the help of the Lord, I'll make it down to it. But I want to start Luke 21. I know everybody in the church is going through troubles, going through trials. Yes. And you know what? Jesus said, I'll never leave you. Right. He said that, and I believe that. Uh -huh. But you know what? Sometimes our faith gets weak. Has your faith ever got weak? Oh, yes. hey, Amen. You know what? People, they say, the preacher's not supposed to get weak. Well, yeah, I've been there. Yes. My faith has got weak. I've been tempted by things that I know that was wrong, but you know what? I had to take heed to what the Word of God said. And when God said not to do it, I had to make it up in my mind and just look to God and say, God, by your help, I can make it. Can you say tonight, God, with your help, I can make it. Now, how many believe tonight that you can make it all the way, no matter what you go through, what you're going through tonight, God said you can make it. And I want you to see that tonight. God said you could make it. Yep. And I want you to know tonight, there's things that you're going to go through and you're going to wonder sometimes when you look around, how did I make it through it? Yeah. You know how you made it through it? By the help of God. Amen. You know what? I couldn't have made it without the help of God. I couldn't have got up this morning without the help of God. But you know what? God told me to do something. God told me to be right here. And when God tells me to do something, I've got to take heed to the Word of God. I hear people every day say, God, you use me. How many says that? Can you say God use me? Will you let him use you? Huh? When God says something, will you let him use you? You know what? We try to base our... Even in our prayer sometimes, we try to look at this one or that one and say, I can't pray like this one. Yes. I can't pray like that one. Mm -hmm. God don't expect you to. God expects you to be you. Mm -hmm. If you just get up here and say, Lord, help me walk with all my weaknesses. It might sound like a little prayer, but God hears it. Amen. 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 God hears it. But you've got to tell God. You've got to tell God what you need. And when God begins to show you something, you've got to take heed to it. And that's what I want you to see tonight by the help for the Lord. Listen to what he says. 25th verse. And then shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations. Now listen to this. With perplexity. Perplex, perplexity. The sea and the waves thereof. Perplexity means confusion. Mm -hmm. Can't you see that today? How that all of the nations and even the good old United States of America is wondering why it's going through what it's going through. 
You know why it's going like that? Well, confusion is of the devil. We're living in a land today where people have forgotten what God has done for them. Uh -huh. People today have left God. This United States of America has left God, and they wonder why it's not a blessed nation. Amen. One nation under God. What's happened to that saying? What's happened to it? The Bible says, he said, when I come, he said, shall I find faith upon the earth? You know what I wondered about that a lot of times when he said that? He said, when I come, will I find faith upon the earth? Look around in here tonight. I know we've got a lot of sickness, but I'm talking about people that can be to the house of God, but chooses not to. You look around, people's got so much stuff out there in the world to get into that they don't have no time for God. Can't you see how the devil has confused their minds that they want everything that's in the world, but they don't want nothing from God? They say that I'm a Christian, but yet they never live the life. They never bring forth no fruit. But you know what? If you're not bringing forth fruit, you're in trouble. Yeah. Amen? Right. But listen to what he says. Men's hearts failing them for fear, uh -huh. for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Amen? I want you to listen to that. And then shall they come the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and a great glory. And then when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, up and lift up your heads, for your redemption <coughs> draws not. Begin to lift up your heads, children, because we're going through things that we've never went through before. We're seeing things yeah. and things that's going on that we've never faced before in our life. But you've seen people begin to get their minds, begin to get shaken. They begin to get weary. They begin to grow cold. And you know what? When you begin to get grow cold, you know the first thing you want this old flesh wants to do? It wants to stay home. Don't want to come to church. Don't want to take heed to what the Word of God says. Don't even want to hear it. I've even come into contact with people before, and you begin to try to witness for them, but when the door is open, you know it, and you begin to expound the Word of God, first thing they want to say is, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Well, if they don't want to hear it, you can't help them. Sure. Amen? Yeah. I can't help people if they don't want my help. Sure. Only thing that I can do is tell them what they need to do. But you know what? I'll guarantee you one thing tonight. When you come to God, persecution's going to come. Yeah. There's going to be people... That's not going to have nothing to do with you. It's not because you personally, but it's what you stand for. If you're letting your light shine out there in the world, you know what? I can't go to the places where a lot of my friends used to go. I can't hang out to those places where they want to go. That's the reason they begin to turn away from you and say, you're no friend of mine. But you know what? I can love those people. I can show them that God loves them, that God cares for them, but I can't run around with them and do the things that they're doing. Yeah. I've heard so many people say, well, I can go into this bar and I can go into that church. Maybe I'll win. No, you won't. They're going to wind up winning you. They're going to wind up winning you. Because you know why? God don't want you in them places. Everybody today, that's the reason their minds are so confused. A lot of people don't even know what they believe. Just like she said here earlier tonight. I did a lot of funerals. And I went to a funeral one time. And the only thing that I did was preach a one God message. And when I got done, I thought this boy was going to whip me. He got in my face. He began to tell me. He said, I think you're just preaching your own agenda. I said, that's your choice. That's your choice. That's what you think about it. I'm just preaching what God's word says about it. Amen. Even though that old devil, I could see the fire in his eyes. But you know what? I couldn't back down. I had to say, that's what the Word of God says. That's the only thing that I've got to give people today is the Word of God. I can't make people accept it. I can't make people do anything. But if you love God, you'll want to do what God said from the bottom of your heart. Amen. With all your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, you'll want to be obedient to the Word of God. But people today, they don't want the Word of God. They don't want the truth. If you tell them what they want to hear, they'll tell you what good a person you are. But when you stand on
in the Word, your friends are going to be few. Yeah. But what works for true friends you do have, they will be true. Amen. Listen, I'm going to jump down here. This is the one I want you to see. 34th verse. 34th verse. And take heed to who? Yourselves. Who? Yourselves. Yourselves. Listen to what he said. He said, Brother John, take heed to yourself. Uh -huh. And I want you to listen to what he says. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that the day come upon you, what? Unawares. Surfeiting means overindulgence in something. You know what? I'll tell you what I did one time. I was coaching the Little League basketball. I was in church at the time. But they began to have ball games on Saturday night. I laid out of church to, because I was the coach of that Little League basketball team that I had to be there. But you know what? I overindulged in the things that was in the world. Not that they was wrong. I'm not saying that they're wrong, but they was wrong for me because I didn't come to church when I ought to be in church instead of out there in the world. I let those things come in my mind. I let them come into my life to where I turned away from God. That I become overindulged in the things of the world and I didn't keep my mind upon God. And everybody began to tell us what kind of a good team we had. And all of this, you know. And I just kept going back Saturday night after Saturday night. Until after a while, my love grew cold to God. Yes. I let my love grow cold. Yes. If you're not careful, he said, listen, yourselves. What are you overindulging in things? The cares of this life. Is your mind upon everything that's going on in the world? Just like he was the same while ago. If we would come into the trials of God and begin to raise our hands and begin to praise God, God would begin to work. But you know what? A lot of times we overindulge in things of the world that when we come into the house of God, we don't no longer have him on our minds. Amen. Serving him. Yourselves. I'll say myself, I'll preach to me tonight so that way nobody can get mad. But you know what? I let those things, not just like I said, well, I want you to listen to me tonight. I'm not telling you things, those things was wrong. And I know everybody, and boy, the devil, he'll jump on you, especially if you've got kids. He'll say, you need to be with that kid on that Saturday night. You need to be on with that kid on Wednesday night. But you know what? You can overindulge in things of the world. Yes. That will get your mind off of God. Yeah. That's how slick the devil is. He's sly. Yes. He's been in this thing a whole lot longer yeah. than you and I have. Don't think that he can't trip you up. Yeah. He said yourselves. Don't be overcharged with the serpent and the cares of this life. How many times have you got stuck upon something that you wanted to do? People they say, I believe I like to hunt, I like to fish. I like to do that. Well, maybe your likes is different than mine. But still, if I let these things overindulge in my life, and I put them before God, then you become, you can worship that as an idol God. You put those things before God. When God has told you to be the house of God, but you say, I want pleasure, I want to do this, I want to do that, then you put your mind over to surfeiting and drunkenness to where that old devil comes in and he'll take your mind and you won't even know it. That's, right. yeah. That's how slick that devil is. Yeah. But you know what? Be careful who you say your friends, who you loaf around with, what you do, where you go. There's a lot of people that want you to come here or go there. But you know what? I don't need somebody to tell me I need to come here or I need to go there. Amen. You know what? I know where God is. You know where God is? 
He lives down in Sodomy. I don't have to go looking for him. If I need to go looking for him, I get down on my hands and knees and say, where are you, Lord? That's when I get my answer. I don't have to say, he's down the road, he's up the road, and I'm running here and I'm running there. I want to be planted, rooted, and grounded in the faith and do what God's Word says to do. Take heed. Take heed to the Word of God. You know what? People will fail you, but God will never fail you. Sometimes people today say, well, they look at this one, say, well, that one can preach better than this one. Yeah. I'm not in no contest against anybody. Yeah. Only contest I'm in is against the devil. Yeah. I, somebody gets up here, can preach better than me, I say, God bless them. Yeah. God bless them. And you know what? If somebody's here that's deeper in the scriptures, get up here. I'll back you wholeheartedly. But you know what? Today, people want to put a name upon somebody, and they want to follow this one. They want to yeah. follow that one. And when somebody else gets up here, somebody else begins to spound the word of God, they never take heed because of that one person that was behind the desk. Even though he told them what the word of God said, they wouldn't get behind him. I know for years, years ago, when we was up in the hall, if people they didn't know that Brother Taylor wasn't going to preach that night, you know what they did? Leave. They would leave. Yeah. I remember seeing them coming up in the hall and they found out he wasn't going to preach. They turned around. Who was they following after? Man. Man or God? Man. That's what I'm telling you. Take heed. Take heed what you hear. Take heed who you yourself, what you listen to, who you follow after, what you do in your life. Because you know what? You're not going to give an answer to me. You're going to stand before God. And when you stand before God in that day, you'll wish you had have taken heed. What I'm telling you tonight is be careful what you do. Take heed to what you listen to. Because this is the most important thing that you ever do is taking heed to the Word of God. God's Word means exactly what it says. And you know what? If you don't accept it because it's God's Word, then you won't accept me. Sure. You know what? But it's not me, the one you're rejecting. You're rejecting God. Can't we see that tonight? That God wants us to take heed to his word. But listen to what he said. For as a snare shall it come on all of them that dwell on the face of the earth. Now listen to what he says. Watch ye therefore. And what? Pray, pray. pray always. That ye may be accounted. Uh oh. What? Worthy to escape all these things shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. You're going to stand before God in that day. But I want you to listen tonight. Go with me to, to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 1. Now listen to what he says. Therefore, we need to get, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have what? Heard. Lest at any time we should what? Let them slip. You mean we can let them slip? Things that we once knew, we can let them slip? Hey Amen. Can't you see how sly that devil is? Boy, I'll tell you one thing. I remember a lot of times when I was working, I'd be laying in bed in the mornings, on, especially on Sunday morning. Boy, it felt so good. Especially in the winter time. Amen. Didn't it feel good? Huh? But God said, get up out of there. Get up out of there and come to church. You know what? I had to take heed to that. Oh, I didn't want to get up. 
But you know what? I did. I tried to do, be the most faithful person that I could be in my walk with God. Amen. Because you know what? God was faithful to me. God did something that nobody else could do. Can't you see tonight how faithful God is and how a lot of times we're not faithful to God? We say we want to serve God, but yet we want to serve God on our terms. We want to serve God the way we want to serve Him. We don't want to get out of that old bed in the morning when it feels good. A lot of times, the old devil, he'll make you feel sick. Yep. You ever been there? Oh, yeah. Amen. I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. Sometimes we'll let this old flesh dictate us what we're going to do. When God says to do something, He say, oh, Lord, lose it. Use me. Come to church. Come to church. Yeah. But Lord, that man feels so good this morning. I can't get out of bed. He'll understand. Lord, yeah, he'll understand. But you know what? This word is going to be open on that day when you face God. And he's going to say, remember that morning? I knocked on your heart, told you to get up out of that bed, but you didn't want to do it. Has there been other things that stood in your way instead of coming to the house of prayer when you ought to have been in the house of prayer but you're somewhere else? Only you can answer that question. But you know what? You better take heed. You better take heed because these words are going to stand before you. He said, listen, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience receive a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Eyewitnesses of these accounts. And God began to tell you God's telling me to take heed, but yet people won't listen. But you know what? There's going to come a day when people says, Lord, I don't have time. And you know what? I thought about this a lot of times. And I thought this went right along with it. Now go over to the third chapter of the book of Hebrews. I'll start at the eighth verse. Eighth verse. Hebrews 3 and verse 8. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation of the day of temptation in the wilderness. Has anybody here been tempted? Huh? Have you been tempted? Everyone, I'm sure everybody in here tonight has been tempted in some way or another. But listen to what he said. When your fathers tempted me, Proved me and saw my works forty years. Wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said they do all they err in their heart and they have not known my ways. You know what? I've got a child that's out in sin. And my prayer is to see my children saved before I die. Because I don't know how long this church is going to be here. I worry. I worry at night. Amen. Every night that I lay my head on my pillow. Yeah. I say, Lord, how much longer, Lord? Lord, have mercy, Lord, upon our children. Yeah. How long, Lord, is it going to be, Lord, before you knock upon their heart? How long and stronger, Lord, is it going to be before they see their need? I worry a lot of times that God's work is going to be finished here. And you know what? God's word is finished. I remember it saying years ago when we used to have a radio broadcast. And he said, when the Lord is done with it, and that's going to be the end of it. And I thank Lord, how much longer are you going to work in our generation? I worry about my children. I worry about your children. I worry about all of our lost loved ones. I say, Lord, what's it going to take to bring them in? 
What's it going to take, Lord, for them to see their need? And you know what? Everybody says, well, there's pleasure out there. Yes? I'm not telling you there's not. The Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a season. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah. I know. I run around. I did things. Did a lot of things that I ought not to have done. But you know what? After a while, I was having fun. But after a while, that pleasure run out. And when that pleasure run out, I was miserable. Yes. I was miserable. And you know what? I knew the only way. And I knew at that time when I was sitting on the porch and God was talking to me and God was telling me to come home. The very same night, we was planning another trip to a casino. And God began to tell me, it's time to come home. I had a choice that I had to make. The pleasure had run out. My wife didn't know it. But God had spoken to me. But you know what? There was something that I had to do. I either had to come and give my life to God. Or I knew I was going to be lost. And I was going to go to that devil's hell. Going to a place of torment for the rest. For the eternity of my life. Yes. And I'm glad that I made the right choice tonight. Aren't you glad tonight that you made that right choice? Yes. Aren't you mad glad tonight that when God knocked upon your heart, you come and you took heed? Did you listen to what the Spirit said to the church? Amen. I had to take heed. You know what? When I sat back on that seat, and I believe Brother Glenn preached that night, and I felt that growing power of God one more time, I knew it was time. Yes. Nobody seen it. Nobody heard God speaking to me, but I did. I did. God was speaking to my mind. God was speaking to my heart. And I felt the drawing power of God. We tell people every day to come to this altar. But you know what? I believe in coming to an altar of repentance. But first, like I said this morning, you've got to be called from God. You can't just come when you want to. When you want to, it might be too late. God may not want you. So when the God, power of God is drawing you and begin to go out to you and you feel the power of God, that's when God is calling you. When God begins to tell you something, tells you what to lay down, tells you what to pick up, the first thing this old flesh wants to do is wants to look out here. Well, Lord, these people over here are doing it. They believe just like we do. Lord, these people up the road doing it. They're doing the very same thing. Lord, they've been baptized in your name. He said there's going to be many in that day that's going to say, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we do many marvelous works in your name? Listen, and you know what he's going to say? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Would you want to be in a state like that? Seem right way. And you know what? This was people that was in the name of Jesus Christ. People today, he said, they would deceive the very elect if it were possible. Amen? So don't think that you can't be deceived. Don't think that that devil is not smarter than you. If you're letting your mind go here and go there and not keeping it up on God, you're going to let the devil come in and take a boat in your mind until you become overindulged with things in the world. We've got time, listen, we've got time to do everything in the world. But it seems like a lot of times we have no time to come to church. Don't have no time to sit and listen. Don't have no time to hear what thus saith the Lord. But I want you to go with me one more place. I, I was going to read that, but I go back to Luke. Luke chapter 17. Now the Lord already said, these things is going to happen. You're going to see these things. I can see them every day. I see people today that once had God. And I see them begin to drift back. I see them going back instead of going forward. 
But children, I want you to know tonight, I'll tell you this, take heed what you hear. Be careful what you hear. Back it up by the word of God. But listen to what he says. 17th chapter and verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered in the ark. And the flood came and what? Destroyed them all. You know what? Even the animals had sense enough to come on that ark. Amen. And here was Noah, a man of righteousness, preaching to those people, but they wouldn't take heed. Right. He told them that the rains was a coming, and the Bible says it never rained in those days. Just a mist come up out of the ground to water the ground. But even though they made fun of Noah, you know what he did? He kept on building. Kept on building. Yeah. That's what I'm telling you tonight. Keep on building. Uh -huh. Keep on building. When you're going through these troubles, everything around you looks bleak. Keep on building. Keep on building your building. And keep on making and doing what God said to do until your building is completed. Amen. Until your death and death comes along. And that's as far as you can go to God calls you home. But you've got to keep on building. Listen to what he says. Everybody today, just like they did back then, they didn't have time for God. They had time to eat. They had time to be married. They had time to marry wives. But I wonder how many, not very many of them, but eight souls were saved by water that entered into that ark. What happened to the rest of them? What happened? The same thing that's going to happen to the we haven't seen the rains, but he said, I'm not going to destroy this world with rain, with water. It's going to be destroyed by fire. Yes. People just like them is going to be just like today. They're not going to turn back. They're going to keep doing what they want until they see the fire falling from heaven. But you know what? When you see that fire falling from heaven, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. And you know what? That's what I'm telling you tonight. Take heed to what God said. Don't let your mind get corrupted with the things of the world. Go with me one other place. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, what? Take heed, what? Lest he fall. That's what I'm going to tell you tonight. Take heed what you read. Take heed and apply it to your life. You know, the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Uh -huh. But you know what? A lot of people, they hear the word of God. But they don't want to do it. A lot of people, you know what? He said, not only to be a hearer of the word, but to be a doer. I want to apply it to my life. I want to be a doer of the word of God. I want to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know if I turn God away, do you think you're going to grow? You know what? Listen to what he says. There hath no temptation taken to you but such is common to man. But God is what? Faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also what, make a what? Make a way to escape uh -oh, that you what? Might be able to bear. Now he didn't say he would do away with it, you might, you're going to go through trials. You're going to go through troubles. But aren't you glad tonight that you've got a mighty God at your servant that won't let you fall if you take heed? Amen. But you've got to take heed, children, to the Word of God. Take heed to what you hear. Not because I say it or somebody else says it. But take heed.
because God's Word says it. How many wants to grow in the grace and knowledge yeah. of the Lord Jesus Christ? I want to grow every day. But you know what? If I'm not hearing and I'm not doing, then I'm not growing. And that's what I want you to hear tonight. Take heed and apply God's words to your life. God loves you. God loves your children. God loves everybody. It's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants people today, just like there used to be signs up, said Uncle Sam wants a few good men. You know what? God wants a few good men and women. Amen. Amen. God wants people that's going to follow after him and quit following after man and what man says about it. Do what God says to do. Amen. You'll never go wrong if you follow after God. Amen. I can fall. Yes. But if you're putting trust in man and you're putting your trust in me or any other man, you'll fall too. But put your trust in God. He'll never fail you. He'll never leave you. And he'll never forsake you. Right. He'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Brother William. Carol, let's get a song. Amen. I know there's just a few of us here tonight. Not sure why.